no music videos this week? <laughs> no, <laughs> thankfully no. Made a bit of noise that one. Uh, obviously, a lot of attention on what's going on off the pitch again as regards to the potential takeover of the football club. John, what do you know at this stage? What are you being told? Uh, nothing more than I've said all along. Um, a lot of sort of uh, news out there, but until I'm told factually any different, then nothing changes from my point of view. The Shareholders Association this week have called on the owner and the Premier League to end this farce, as they said. How similar is your mindset then as regards to this at the moment? Well, I wouldn't comment on their view. Um, I just think that I can only imagine, and somewhat I know a little bit about it, you know, a last club that was a takeover, and it took a long time. Um, and, you know, there's a lot going on at this club. I think we've I think we've spoken on this subject before, obviously, and, and there's a lot going on. It's not just as simple as the club's up and running and you just, you know, buy it. I don't think it's that situation. You've got, a, a, you know, new ground getting built. You've got the complexities of the finances here. That's become obvious. Um, staying in the division, which is now achieved, of course. There's a lot going on. So I don't know who all them p- uh, points are all necessary. But I would imagine there's a lot of detail that goes into buying this football club, and, and that would take some time. It seems, obviously, agreement was reached uh, last year, um, and the fact that it's dragged on so long, surely it's impacting you now because you've secured Premier League safety, yet I would imagine you're not necessarily able to plan fully for what lies ahead now. Well, I didn't know at the time, but ever since I got here, I've been, you know, uh, trying to manage a situation of the goal co- uh, goalpost, sorry, move significantly at any given time. So I don't think I'm in uh, new waters for that side of things. So, you know, and that is the challenge at the moment. You know, it's the shift in sands of this football club or current shift in sands. We, you know, I've said many times you want to put a base into the club to build from and and it's not quite there yet. There's, there's situations that are out of my control, um, but they are in people's control. Um, and certainly at a level of the club that know more about all the details and the minutiae and the important side of getting a deal done. Um, so until I'm told different, I keep working accordingly. So how is planning working at the minute? How are decisions being taken? Because obviously there's players' futures to consider. Seamus out of contract in the summer. Harrison and Dan Juma's loans end. Gomez out of contract. Deli Ali, Idrissa Gay, Ashley Young. Dominic Calvert-Lewin goes into the final year of his contract as well. Easy. <laughs> that bit's easy. <laughs> Great fun it is too. Um, no, look, I mean, you know, we're having to uh, manage different situations the best we can. Kevin and his team, myself and the staff, looking at players, looking at options. Obviously, the ones in-house currently, the ones that are controllable as we see fit um, contractually, and then that would have to go to the interim board and still the owner is, is you know, in, in uh, ownership now um, to sign off in certain situations because the club has to keep moving forward, of course. Outside of that, more tricky on the transfer side because you, what money is available, what money gets generated as normal um, in a situation uh, in any summer period um, and trying to sort of imagine all these different scenarios and it's very difficult. It's difficult for, for Kevin, his team, difficult for me and the staff to navigate our way through and find out who we're keeping for sure. Fair to say an important factor that is, of course, securing Premier League status, of course, because it's a two-way thing, don't forget. It's not just us wanting players them and their advisors also look back at the club and say, right, OK, where's the club at? Well, the first big hurdle this season, particularly with points taken off us and, and the like, was to make sure we secure ourselves in the Premier League. So we've done that. So obviously that changes somewhat their view back to us as well. Yeah, so you've done your job and effectively brought stability on the pitch. Isn't it time that you had stability and clarity from above now as well? Yeah, but you can only have stability and clarity if, if it's there. You know, if, if the deal was done, I'm sure they'd come and say, right, the deal's done, it's all signed off, this is where we're at. But unfortunately, it's not that case at the moment. So, like I say, I have to just stay flexible-minded to, to what comes next. Every day's like that, yeah. Every, every week's like that. Not every day, but every week's like that. What comes next? We'll have to wait and see. Do you expect to have any conversations, be it with the owner, be it with prospective new owners, or, or what, over the coming weeks now? No, I, I've said uh, authentically, because it's real, is the the... the or the current 777 group, a very casual relationship with that. That hasn't changed. Um, Mr. Mashiri, I've had conversations with, but not about this situation, more about the team and how that's gone, of course. Um, the rest is with the, the powers that be at the club. You know, it's, it's hard enough managing the, my part of it and trying to manage that, but it would be not impossible. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see what comes of it. Not that it impacts the league position per se, but the uh, appeal against the points deduction as well, is, is there a chance that that could just be forgotten now and, and not go through? Yeah, I mean, that's another decision for the club to consider. I'm sure the, um, 
the, the, on the law side and the lawyer side of things, they'd, they'd offer many different advices on what would be best to do uh, going forwards. Uh, back to the job that you've done this season, though, as well, and you were being talked about as a possible nominee for manager of the year. I'm guessing that securing safety with three games to go, that's reward enough for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the the accolade of that as as, as well earned that it is forever wins that sort of uh, award. I, I think it's been a, a different kind of season here. You know, it's not really about that. It wouldn't uh, if you win something great, but it's not really about that for me. You know, I'm I'm very pleased with my part amongst many others in in making sure that we've seen our way through this season then I don't need an award for that that's for sure I know I know the reward for myself reward as a, as a manager from getting that job and like I say playing that and my part um, in how that job's come about to get done so I've been really pleased with that. What satisfaction do you also take from what we've seen from Dominic Calvert-Lewin towards the end of, of the season as well? Because you obviously were patient with him at the start and gave him every chance to start trusting his body again. Yeah I mean <laughs> The risk and the reward at the time was 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 heavy, you know, because everyone's pushing and wanting me to make decisions and get him out there and all that sort of stuff. But it wasn't just me. It was there's a bit of common sense to it. I just looked at his past, looked at his stats, looked at where he was, and looked at where he needed to be. Pieced it all together. So it's not just me. It's with the, the medical side, of course, and the sports science side to bring that thinking together, and with the player, and it needed buy-in by all parties. And it, it was a challenge. But I think slowly but surely over this season. Um, he's, he's earned the right to be considered where he is, which is a, a very, very good striker. Um, and, and he's rewarding himself and us with goals as well. Euros may be too soon for him? Oh, well, you never know in football, do you? Because it's, it's very, uh, uh, these competitions are very form related. But I, I, would, I would be surprised um, if that happened now. Just finally, Sean, from me, uh, what importance do you obviously put on finishing with a win at home, particularly given the impact that the fans have had and we've seen what the Gladys Street has been like with, with the flags that the fans have put out as well? Yeah, a, a run of uh, really strong home, uh, not just performances, because they weren't as important as the outcomes, that was wins. So I think we want to add to that. And uh, I've said all along, I think maybe, you know, now football works, the, the mysterious world that it is, but maybe the payback from early season form when we were dominating games and couldn't win. And then over the last few weeks at home, we've done very well in a different format. And we want to do that again. Wherever it comes around, we want to reward the, all of us, really, the players, the staff and the fans, um, for, for a, what ends up being a, a positive season. It's a very, very tricky time. So we want to finish it off with a win. Thank you. Uh, Sean, what's the team news ahead of Sheffield United this weekend? Um, most are around it. Um, we've not got anyone seriously injured, so it should be the, the group ready to go again. Are there any decisions to be made in terms of selection with a bigger picture in mind, or is it your strongest squad, if you like, strongest? Oh, team I always pitchers? believe in playing a team that can win the game, so that'll be the main thing. Um, you know, there, there might be certain changes, but we'll wait and see. We've we've come through training today unscathed, um, so pretty much a group that we can change, and we, and we want to if we feel it's right. But we want to go into the game and win it. That's uh, our mindset. And what sort of atmosphere do you expect at Goodison? Because a lot of it has been talked about the last two years. <coughs> it's gone pretty much down to the final home game, um, on-field celebrations. Well, this time around, you, you secured safety with several games to go. And will it be one of relief, exuberance? What do you expect? Um, I'm not sure. We want to give a performance. We want to win. Um, I think afterwards, so they tell me, because obviously last year was so different, but it'll be the first time in a number of years we can just have a walk around in a, in a fashion that is rewarding for the players and for the fans. You know, that uh, that joined up thinking, if you like. So the last couple of years have been fraught at the end of the season. You know, this season's not been like that. So I think that's a, a nice sign-off for the players at home and for the fans. And hopefully you do that on the back of a win as well. But yeah, overall, a, a really a really strange season for many reasons. Yet we end up with a, a positive feel to it. Or certainly I do. And I think the players do and I think the fans do. And just finally, what's the motivation now for these final two games for you and the players? Because it'd be easy for everyone just to take a deep breath and relax because you have secured safety, but presumably you want more than that. I think from my point of view, I think um, I think we showed uh, Luton that we were willing to put our bodies on the line and defend properly and uh, give our lot to the game. I don't think we did as well with the ball, so I think we've got to improve on that. Um, you're always looking for the team for the consistencies that I, I help on about endlessly. So it's fair to say they've, they've got to be there. So I'm looking for the consistency um, over the next two games to go and perform and, and hopefully to take wins. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. We'll go to Julia. <coughs> Is it different taking on a side that's already been relegated? Um, I don't know. I've never really thought about it. I mean, Chris is someone I, I get on well with and I respect him. 
than his side. They've had a tough season, obviously. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, knowing the, the guy that he is, I'd be very surprised if they're thinking of anything other than, than you know, finishing the season correctly themselves. Um, so we've got to be ready for that. Um, no team lays down, and I don't think I certainly know he won't be, um, and his staff, and and we've got to make the players, if anything, you know, trust in ourselves to go and perform in a level that we can uh, get the win that we want. You mentioned about deals there. Um, someone that the fans are desperate to know it could be his final home game after 15 years. Seamus Coleman. Will there be any update ahead of that game? And also, what's it been like to work with him? No, he's been great, but it's ongoing, I think. I've already spoken to him about his, his view, and at this stage, I mean, there's another couple of weeks left to, you know, I said reflect on where you're at, but I think his thirst is to keep playing. Um, so we'll be looking into that. But, yeah, so I, I don't think there's any reason to wonder about his last game or not at this stage, and certainly that's his words, not mine. So he's, he's made it clear at this stage his, his mindset is to keep playing. Yeah. Do you see him staying on in a coaching role at some point in his career as well? Has he got that in him? I think he's learning to have that in him. I think he's absorbed a lot from a lot of different experiences here. You know, for a player who's been here so long, the good side of all the turnover managers, you can learn a lot, you know, from the varying input, the varying styles, the varying ways of uh, working. And I think he's like that, and I think he will absorb that, and he certainly knows the club like the back of his hand. So, yes, I could see him in the future, but these players are different now. It's if he chooses to. You know, players at this level, you've had 14 years at a club like this, coming up maybe 15, then, you know, it's a different thing. You know, they have choices now. You know, when I was finishing, you had to go and do something. These players can have a choice now if they want to or not. Yeah. And how likely is it now you're going to look towards the under-21 setup as well? I know you've, you've watched games when you can this season. Given, you know, the situation at the club, you're going to have to do some deals. Is there a, is there a close relationship with the under-21s? Are you seeing anybody likely to progress over the summer and join? Yeah, it's, it's not about having close relationships. It's about whether they're good enough. Um, you know, it's simple as that. It, it, the industry is very demanding when you get to the Premier League level. Um, I often talk about young players having two careers. The first one's away from the club, and then they come back and they push for the first team. I think that's sometimes relevant to get them sort of pre-ready, what the Premier League brings. And now and again, you get a player who comes straight through, and they jump into it. At this stage, I don't think I can see anyone at this stage jumping straight into the first team. But with, with good development and ongoing development, who knows? Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. We'll go to <coughs> Hi, Sean. Um, just on the manager of the re of the year shortlist, were you surprised by by not being named on it at all? No, not at all. Uh, there's no reason to be, you know. And and like I say, there's no relevance to me this this time round. And I, I'm not particularly bothered with awards. I know the work that I do. I know the work the people around me do. Um, but I do have value in it, being it's part of the LMA, and I, I certainly support and back the LMA. With all the obstacles that you've overcome here. Do you think externally you get the credit that you think you deserve for doing the job that you've done here? I'm not really bothered about all that sort of stuff. You know, I've been in it long enough. Hero, zero, zero, hero, it comes and goes. Um, I think I credit myself when I've done a good job and I think I've done this season. But there's so many of, of, around me. You know, my staff have been vital. Um, the, 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 the club, actually, of staying calm. Um, through some really tough periods. And also the fans, you know, it needs everyone to be connected. So I've always worked on that basis. And on Sheffield United, they're already relegated. And you're safe. How do you put the mindset that this isn't a dead rubber and there's still you know, positions to play for? In the you just have to focus on the players and remind them of the fact that, you know, the, as mentioned earlier, the pride and consistency we have in, a, in our values as a, as a group to go and perform. So I think that's important and to keep reminding them of that. So when there was a blows, we've got to be ready. As I said at Luton, I thought we were ready physically. We showed that in the second half, demanding of ourselves to make sure we got something from the game. We didn't do as well with the ball in the attacking side of things. So finding that balance and particularly at home, of course, taking on a game that we want to win. Has training been more relaxed recently or are you still... Yeah, it's human nature. You know, after the, the season that we've had and, and all of us played our part in it, it's, it's been taxing. So, yeah, of course, the, a couple of days off here and there, um, but the work still gets done properly and they were in good spirits today. They've, they've worked reasonably well today and, and quite hard, actually, statistically, down our season stats, physically, that is. Um, so, yeah, we want them ready and we want them to perform. Cheers. Thanks, Jimmy. We'll go to Carl. Hi, Sean. Hey. Just a quick one. Um, I know you said you you stayed away from all the all the takeover stuff that's been going on, and you tried to keep distance from it. But is there a point in the future where you need, for the sake of your preseason planning, you need to go right? Okay, I need to know where we are at this point because I've got to make decisions about what we do for next season. Otherwise, you're going to be 
behind going into next season? Well, first, I haven't stayed away. I kept distant. It's just the way that it works. You know, it's not it's not necessary for me to have input in that side of it. Uh, the idea of how how we're working going forward is it's like I said earlier, it's the shift in sands. You know, being being prepared for any outcome and lots of different possibles and variables. That's just part of the job here currently, and that's been for a long time, or certainly since I got it. Surely there'd be a point where you, you need it. You need there comes a time when pre-season's coming around. And you like I said, there, there isn't there isn't a situation yet where that can be done. So therefore, we're, we're all open-minded. Myself, Kev on the recruitment side, the players' contract side, the staff on what comes next. We've all got to be open-minded. But it's been like that for a long time here. You know, I've said many times in the media. You know, when people get this impression of recently. Um, when we when we made sure we secured ourselves, there was kind of all well, that underlying feeling. There, oh well, you know, crack on now. It's not as easy as that. There isn't a crack on moment at the moment. Uh, trust me, there's lots to do, lots and lots and lots to do, to just get back to a base and a level playing field in order to move forwards. Thanks, Carl. Any further questions in the open section? Yeah. Hi, Sean. Uh, obviously, the Premier League player nominees have been released for the end of the year awards. Um, I don't know how seriously you consider these awards. Obviously, Rodri wasn't even selecting the, the men's uh, the top six, but Jared Branthwaite obviously wasn't selected for the young player. He had a brilliant season. I just wondered, is that a surprise? Nothing surprises me anymore in football. Um, it's a near impossibility, in my opinion, but, you know, uh, the awards, they, they, uh, I can never fathom them out on, on any level in football. Um, so I'm sure there's someone decided um, who is and who isn't, but I'm I'm very surprised. I would offer the hasn't been considered. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, the season he's had is probably uh, good enough for him. It's been brilliant. Isn't it? It's yeah, I, I, yeah. It's a fair point. You know, look, awards are nice for any player, um, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure he knows where he's at, and I'm pretty sure he's enjoyed the process and looking forward to what comes next. I don't think the award's going to change that.